Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth, another podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. We've got a great show lined up for you today, and today's theme is past lives. And if you're tuning in for the very first time, my name is Dr. Leslie. I am your host. I'm a spiritual teacher and an author and a professional intuitive. And in this show, we talk about everything to do with metaphysics and spirituality. So we're exploring anything from your different psychic experiences, paranormal occurrences, your own psychic abilities, or you can even phone in and ask about anything that's going on in your life, whether it's relationship issues, career, money, health issues, questions about your life purpose or your spiritual abilities. And like I said, today is all about past lives. And this is, I find, a really popular subject. People are fascinated to know, have they been here before? And so if you are wondering, have you been here before? I'm going to take you to through my top Top, top five to ten reasons or way or clues that that can give you uh, an idea that you have been here before. So tip number one for you to be able to uh, know if you have had past lifetimes. And I'm being a bit cheeky here because you know what? Pretty much everyone on this planet has had past lifetimes. <laughs> but anyway, here's how to recognize a past life experience. Have you ever had a dream that you were in a different body? Have you ever had a dream where you were in a different body? So, for example, have you, if you're a woman right now, have you ever had a dream that you were a man? <laughs> Or if you're a man right now, have you ever had a dream that you were a woman? And in that dream, and you may have also been just in exactly the same gender, but the other clue is that you are wearing clothing from a different time in history. So you've looked down at your body in your dream and... It's very peculiar because you're not wearing modern clothing at all. Maybe you're wearing a toga from ancient Rome. Maybe you're wearing a loincloth from an African tribe. And, you know, the other thing, of course, is you could have a different skin color. So you might be Caucasian today and in your dream, you might be, um, you know, of a different hue altogether. And... um, you know, and you also might find that you are speaking another language or dialect in your dream. And you might also realize that you are in a completely different country than you live in today. And, it, you know, when you look at the dreamscape around you, then you're looking at something which, again, is not from modern times. So... You know, it may be fairly modern history, but things look just a little bit old fashioned or a little bit dated. Or it may just be something that is quite alien to you. Maybe you're wandering around the pyramids or something. So tip number one that you have been here before is to have a dream where you are in a different body than you are in today. And it's a different period in history. So if you've ever had that experience... That could be a clue that you were tuning in to a past lifetime. Now, just as a corollary to that, I wanted to also mention that, of course, you may you don't have to look at all like you look today. 
I've noticed that there's a lot of misinformation out there about past lives. And I came across a couple of websites the other day just because uh, one of my my clients uh, wanted me to take a look at it because they they'd been reading information from it. And there was um, a person who was proving the existence of past lives of famous people. And the way that he was doing it was he was looking at photographic evidence from famous people from the past or statues from famous people from the past. And he was comparing them to famous people from today. And if he saw a physical likeness, he was saying, you know, that Alexander the Great is the past life incarnation of, you know, whatever person he looked like. And of course, that's actually completely bogus, right? You can look completely different in a past lifetime. You can cho- you're choosing completely different genetics for a start. And so, you know, and those genetics that you're choosing are equipping you for whatever it is that you're coming into that lifetime to do. So variety is the spice of life. And variety is the spice of past lives as well. You don't need to look at all like you do today. Tip number two. Have you ever gone on vacation? I'm sure you have. To a new place. It might be a new city in the country that you live in or it might be a foreign land. You know, another continent uh, you know, somewhere in, 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 in Europe or Asia that you've never been to before. And yet, even though you have never been to this place before, it seems really familiar to you. You recognize it even though you've never been there before. And so that's a real curiosity to you. How can I know this place? Maybe I've seen photographs of it on the Internet But, you know, perhaps your experience goes one step further and you have an uncanny knowing about the layout of the town or city that you are in. Somehow you know where you, how to get around without a map. You know that if you're going to this particular museum or this particular palace or this particular location, you know roughly in what direction to head. You might even recognize some of the streets. Everything seems really, really familiar. And yet in this type of experience, it's common for people having this experience to recognize everything up until a certain point in history. And then the more modern things might seem a bit more alien and out of place. Because, of course, that lifetime ended before they were created. So that's tip number two about past life recall. So if you recognize that experience, if that's ever happened to you or somebody you know, that can be an example of recalling a past lifetime. Tip number three. And I am pretty sure that everyone out there will have had this experience. So have you ever met somebody for the first time and had a really strong reaction to them? Now, it could go either way, this strong reaction that I'm talking about. So it may be that you meet this person and you just feel like this is an old friend. You've known them your whole life. They're like a brother or a sister to you. You feel instantly comfortable in their company. You really have a high affinity to, to, with them. You like them a lot. And it's like you just fit, groove easily together. You fit really easily together. Or it could go the opposite way, where you meet somebody for the first time and you have an instant dislike which you can't explain because they've not even opened their mouths yet but you are totally revulsed by this person (laughs) you want to get as far away from them as possible and um, you know you're scratching your head as to why you had such a strong reaction in both of those examples you could be 
recognizing somebody who you were in a past life with. And, you know, it may be a have been a positive experience or a not so positive experience. And this is what explains your reaction to this person. And actually, that brings me on to another sort of fact about past lives. And that is that we tend to incarnate with our soul group. And what our soul group is, it's kind of like a, a, a bunch of friends or buddies that we have that we travel from life, one lifetime to the next with. And so if you look around your life today, most of the people that you know today are people that you've known before, whether it's your family, people at work, um, it's very, very likely that they are members of your soul group and that you have had prior interactions with them. So we incarnate with our friends. And of course, the relationships between people changes. So somebody might be your father in one life and your grandson in another. Somebody might be your wife in one life and your boss in another. <laughs> Some people might say that can be the same thing. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's, it can be really fascinating to explore your past lives with respect to your relationships with people. And it can actually help enlighten you and give you more information to explain why you have the particular interaction with them that you do because you may be bringing some baggage over from past life um, the past life relationships that you've had all right so i'm going to move on to my tip number four and you know if to cast your mind back to when you were a child now so do you remember when you were a child and I know I had this experience, actually. When I was very little, I didn't quite feel like I belonged in my body. And I didn't really believe that my name was Leslie either. And that's quite a common thing that, you know, new, new kids coming into new lifetimes, they're still open intuitively and still connected with a wider range of reality than they are by the time they're an adult. And so they might question who they are and why they're here. And there's actually been quite a few accounts of children who really actively remember their past lives and are able to tell their parents about them. And when the parents are open to hearing about this, and that's especially the case more, more in you know, India and the East where they believe more in reincarnation than Westerners do. But they've been able to, the parents have listened and they've actually been able to go and visit the old family. There's even cases where I think there was one little boy and he was able to tell his parents that he had hidden some um, treasure somewhere and he wanted to go and um, show his old family where this was because they hadn't found it yet. And he was able to visit his wife, who was an old lady, the equivalent of his grandmother or his great-grandmother, and he recognized her and, you know, she was open to the idea and he was able to show, um, you know, only things that this person who'd, who, who died could have known. So if you had an experience when you were a kid and you questioned your identity and, you know, maybe you even questioned your identity in the form of um, gender because it's quite possible that your last lifetime was a man and now you're male and now you're female or vice versa. And so... You know, this is why, you know, little kids can have a little adjustment sometimes because if they've changed what kind of body they are in. 
And so, I mean, this is sort of drifting into another point, which is, you know, and then so you feel perhaps like you don't belong in some way in the current lifetime. Somehow you feel that you don't fit in. And, you know, we can see with some people that they carry this on. It does, you know, like sometimes the the kid will grow out of this and they will sort of really step into the current identity. But other people, you know, we were just at the weekend at um, uh, a thing called Imaginarius Fantasticus and there were, were people who were dressed up like knights of the Middle Ages and, um, you know, doing traditional sword fighting and women dressed up as wenches from the Middle Ages and so on. There are some people that retain a strong interest in a period of history and that can also be a clue that you were alive during that period of history. And there's, you know, many more things that can be clues about past lives. And we've got, you know, a couple of minutes before I'm going to go to break. And after break, I am going to be taking your calls. So I want to make sure that you've all got the phone number so that you can call in. 604 504 7441 extension 4142. So once again, that's 604 504 7441 extension 4142. And so call in. You can ask about past lives. You can ask about anything else that you like as well. And I'm just going to quickly give you a few more clues about past lives. If you've got an unexplained and unresolved fear, something that just does not make sense to you, you know, I mean, people have fears about snakes, spiders, water, heights, all sorts of things. And there can be perfectly logical explanations, but sometimes it can be because there was a past lifetime where they passed away as a result of what the thing that it is that they're afraid of. And in my line of work where I'm training people how to access and activate their intuition, I find it's actually quite common to encounter people who are afraid of their intuitive abilities because they had a past life where they were punished for having them. For example, we've all heard about the witches being burned at the stake and, um, you know, all sorts of things like that. And so I encounter that quite commonly in the work that I do. And finally, just before we go to break, one more clue that you have been here before and you are connecting with a past lifetime. And that is... Do you have some kind of real natural ability or aptitude or something one day that you just decided that you would have a go at doing it and you were just fantastic at it? You didn't have to try very hard. You didn't really have to learn. You could just plug and play. That can also be an example of you tapping into an ability that you developed when you were alive before. Welcome back, everyone, to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. Welcome to the show. If you're just tuning in, we've been talking all about past lives. And right now, we're going to go to your calls. Hello. Hello, Dr. Leslie. Those were great hints, by the way, about past lives. I really enjoyed those. Anyway, we don't have a call at the moment, but I do have an email that just came in for you. Great. And the email is from Bert. Who was in the, his question was, who was I in a past, in a recent past life, right before this current one? Thank you in advance for your reply. Well, thank you so much, Corey. And we will take a look for Bert at Radio what his... Call 604-851-6307. The contact... 
past life was. And bear with me. So I'm just going to take a moment, callers, to tune in to Bert. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, the way I do this is I go into a very light self-induced trance. And it just takes a little moment for me to do that. And when I'm doing that, I'm tuning into Bert's energy. And I'm going to take a look at a past lifetime of Bert. And I'm actually seeing the image of a really big dam. And I'm getting the sense of somebody who is an engineer or an architect. And I'm going to see if I can get a location for where this well, what I'm hearing is the Aswan Dam. Now, I'm not sure what year the Aswan Dam was built. But um, just for those of you who are tuning in because you want to learn about past lives, it's actually possible for somebody to have two bodies on the planet at the same time. So there is such a thing as parallel lives. So we don't worry too much if timelines appear to overlap. So anyway, I'm getting um, an image of the Aswan Dam. And I am seeing that the past life of Bert, he was in a male body and he looks Arabic, Middle Eastern. He's wearing um, a long white garment with the you know, chic style headdress. And um, he looks very busy. And so what I want to say is that he is um, some kind of engineer or designer or architect that worked on the Aswan Dam. And he is extremely diligent. He is, um, looks, when I'm looking at him, he looks super busy, super concerned, running around, making sure that everything is just so, making sure that everything is really precise and um, exactly as it should be. So it looks like in this lifetime, Bert, you took a lot of, well, a great deal of pride in your achievements, but also a great deal of responsibility for them. And I'm seeing that the other thing about you is that you are very, very intellectual, very logical. And I'm seeing most of your energy is sort of there in your intellect. And because of this tendency to, to um, sort of be so committed to your work and to be so very intellectual and so very responsible, I'm seeing that you didn't um, always pay a lot of attention to the other aspects of life, such as your family. And so I'm seeing that you were married in that lifetime and you had children and you had quite a big extended family, um, but your wife felt relatively neglected because you kind of, you know, you didn't prioritize her and you let her look after the kids and all of that. And so I'm going to take a look at how that relates to the current lifetime, if, if it does. And I'm seeing in the current lifetime that you have the same tendency to be very heavily logical and intellectual and get absorbed in your work. And I'm seeing that this takes all of your energy and, and again, that there's a feeling of... Um, a life that's not completely in balance. And I'm seeing that, you know, one of the reasons this is coming up is to remind you that um, life is here to have, you know, for us to ha expand ourselves and to have, just to create things, but also to have fun as well. So the little message there about just loosening up, relaxing, you know, and, you know, experiencing more of the, full scape of of reality so i hope that that has answered your question bert 
And I hope that that makes sense to you, given who you are today. And I, I thank you for sending your email in. And、um, I'm going to see if we have a caller. And again, it's 604-504-7441, extension 4142. And if we don't have a caller, then we will go to another email. Hello. Hello, Dr. Leslie. We have another email question for you. This、Great. one's a little bit of a long one, and it's from Steve. And Steve says, I am aware of energy patterns from past lives that keep repeating and causing me hardship in this life.、Mm-hmm. In a former life, I was isolated from society as someone did not like me. This seems to be a recurring theme in several past lives and my current life. When I purposely sabotage my life so I have nothing and no one, how can I change this pattern? Well, and again, this is from Steve. Great, thanks, Corey. So we're going to take a look at that for you, Steve. I hope you're tuning in, seeing as、um, you know, we're reading your question on air. And once again, for everyone, you know, you can email your questions. If you're a bit shy and you don't want to、um, have your voice on air, Then you can send your question to info at drlesliephillips.com. And you can ask us to use a pseudonym as well if you're feeling shy. So I am going to have a look at,、um, at what's going on with Steve. And of course, like I explained before, I'm just going to take a moment to connect with Steve's energy and also with his past life timeline. Oh, and actually, you know what? Before I do, let's l- use this as a little bit of a teaching opportunity because、um, what Steve is describing is a fairly common thing in that the soul will often learn about a particular issue over multiple lifetimes. So it can take as many lifetimes to gain seniority or mastery over a particular thing. So that's not unusual at all. The other thing I see quite commonly is that、um, we might experience something from different ex- perspectives over multiple lifetimes. You know, and a common example would be in this lifetime you are a doctor, and in a previous lifetime you were an invalid. So in this lifetime you're learning perhaps about giving selflessly. And in the other lifetime you were learning about receiving. And over both lifetimes, those two. Uh, polarities are balanced out. So let's get back to Steve's question. And like I said, I'm just going to take a moment to tune into his energy and take a look at what is going on. And the first thing that I'm seeing when I am tuning into Steve. Is actually,、um, it's, it's, it's a blockage. And it is a blockage to him receiving his own source vibration, his own inner voice, his own information. And it almost looks like a fist、um, strangling him to me when I'm, when I'm looking at this symbol. And so it looks like, Steve, you've labeled yourself as a victim. You've labeled yourself as somebody who is unlikable. You've labeled yourself as somebody that other people find to be unworthy and will even attack. And you've kind of accepted this and wearing it as, as though it was an article of clothing. You're saying, you know, this, is, this, is, this vibration is who I am. And it's not who you are. And actually, just because you experienced something in a past life doesn't mean at all that you need to carry that energy into the current life. It happens sometimes, but it, it's a choice. It's not、um, like a karmic law that this must happen. And so I'm seeing, you know, to answer your question, how can I change this pattern? The answer is. It's actually down to you to stop believing those things about yourself. So, 
you need to start loving and appreciating yourself and valuing yourself as being worthy. And, you know, realize that if somebody else does feel that way about you, that's their problem and you don't need to take that on. Because at the moment what's happening is because you're accepting all of these beliefs, you're carrying that energy signature in your field. And there's a law of the universe that says like attracts like. Whatever frequency you are putting out, the universe will reflect that back at you. So the key to this is change your frequency, change how you feel about yourself. I would suggest, um, you know, letting go of even letting go of the focus on these past lives because they are past lives. They are not present. And if you bring all of your attention into the present and just focus on changing your frequency right here, right now, you can completely turn this around. Now, of course, that brings me to another thing that's worth mentioning, and that is, you know, yes, the universe matches frequencies and you create your reality through your thoughts and through your beliefs. And if we take that into the theme of today's show, which is about past lives, you actually create future lives. So this is not just about past lives or present lives. There's such a thing as future lives. And so that's why it's possible for certain aspects to be projected from a past life into the current life because energy follows thought, right? You create your reality through your beliefs. Now, mostly, or, you know, that will catch up with you in the current lifetime, but it also catches up with you beyond the current lifetime into, into your, um, you know, future existences. So, I'm just going to finish off and say thank you, Steve. And I hope that that has assisted you and given you some help. And I just want to um, just use the opportunity of you, you know, thank you for your question of you um, asking that question to just use a little analogy again to explain a bit more about past lives. Because we, in, from our human perspective, we think in a very linear fa um, fashion, you know. We exist in time and space, and so we think about a sequence of events, and that's actually not the truth of it at all. And the an analogy that I like to use to explain this is think about one of those sparkly disco balls with all the mirrors. And if you imagine that that sparkly disco ball with all the mirrors is your soul or your source energy, some people like to call that God, you know, there's different words that you can choose. But if you, if you think of that as the soul or the source of you, and then, you know, when you're at the disco and all those little lights are shining on the floor, and there's, you know, loads of them, isn't there? And they're all simultaneously being projected from that disco ball. If you think about the ball representing your soul and each light that's being reflected from that or projected from that as being a lifetime... And, you know, you can walk around the floor and you can follow one of them and there might be some behind you and some in front of you. And from your perspective of standing on the little light that you are, those ones behind you might feel like past lives and those ones in front of you might feel like future lives. But actually, they're all just emanating from the same source. It's just your current perspective that's making you think of them as past, future or even parallel existences. I'm going to see if we have a caller. Hello, Corey. Hello, Dr. Leslie. I have another email that just came in for you. And the email question that um, Lane, Laney, I think her, is her name, if I'm pronouncing it correct, correctly, L-A-I-N-I-E, I am married, but I have a strong connection with a married male friend. I have been told we shared a past life, and I'm wondering why we aren't together in this lifetime. I feel I've known him for a long time. I trust and accept him and feel at peace whenever I'm in his company. And that's her question to, to you. Great. Thanks, Corey. 
So, Lainey, let's have a look. Gosh, I can see how you might be a little bit confused about your feelings here. And, um, you know, for those of you who tuned in and missed the first part of the show, we were talking about clues as to um, past, you know, how you know if you've had past lives. And one of them was feeling a strong connection with somebody, that that's a clue that you're tuning into a past life connection. And that is a person that you have had a past life with. Anyway, we're going to look at this question very specifically now in the context of Lainey and her question. And once again, I'm going to go into a very light trance so that I can see Lainey's energy clairvoyantly and so that I can access her past life timeline and see if I can pick up a life where she has known this married male friend. So, of course, the answer is yes, that you've known this person in prior lifetimes. But I'm also seeing you've known your husband in prior lifetimes as well and many other people who are currently in your life. So let's delve into one or two of the lives where where you um, knew this person. And there's a lifetime that's showing up about of the third of the way down your past life timeline. And again, for the listeners, just to explain the way I do this is I look at somebody's entire timeline from right who they are right now, all the way back in history to the very first incarnation that they had on Earth. And Lainey, I'll just let you know that you're an old soul. You've been coming back here again and again, many, many times. So you have a long timeline. And um, this is about a third of the way down. And I'm just going to take a look at... So the image that I'm getting that's getting me into this past lifetime is I'm seeing a horse and I'm seeing a man, a soldier on that horse. And the way that the soldier is dressed, he reminds me of either an ancient Roman soldier or possibly an ancient Greek. I think it's an ancient Roman one. The way I'm seeing the image, it's more like I'm looking at a statue or a, um, a, 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 a metal sculpture than I'm actually looking at the real person. So give me a moment. He's holding a, a shield and a, um, a spear and the horse is up on two legs. So let me take a look. I'm seeing you in a female body and I'm seeing that the statue that I'm seeing is a statue of this married male friend who he was in this past life and I'm seeing you have been widowed at a very young age. So you're in a sort of dark cloak and your hair is unsheveled and you're crying your eyes out. And he, so he was a soldier and he died in battle. And so all you have left are your memories and this statue of him that was... So it looks like he died a hero. It looks like he... Um, you know, like to die in battle was one of the highest honours that you could have as a soldier. And he may have even been some kind of commander in this Roman legion that he was a part of. Um, and so, you know, you're supposed to feel, um, in a way, you know, grateful or honoured that your man has died in this fashion. But that's not how you feel. You feel grief stricken you feel bereft you have uh, you've suffered a great loss and you are not looking forward to living the rest of your life because you are a young woman without this person and so i'm seeing that um at this point that i'm looking at you 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 you're really not dealing with his death very well at all so give me a moment and i'm going to look at um some more details about this Yeah, I'm seeing you went through a long, drawn-out grieving process and depression. And you wanted 
in this lifetime um, to join him. You felt like it would be better to be dead yourself than um, to live this life without him. And so, you know, I'm seeing that you really went to the very depths of, dis of, of human despair um, af in the aftermath of, of his death. And, I, you know, I'm seeing you had some very kind, caring people around you. Um, it looks like there's a mother figure that's there. And there's, you know, people want, really wanting to help you. And it just doesn't seem like anything that they say helps you at all. So I'm, I'm going to read a bit further forward and, and see what happens. And then we'll talk about how this relates to you, your relationship with him in the present lifetime so you know I, I'm seeing that what they did was they kind of did the old thing of like why <laughs> dropping you off at the equivalent of a nunnery although it wasn't a nunnery it was just a, a temple of priestesses who were healers and you went and stayed with them and they healed you and looks like there was a whole variety of methods that they used um, purging you with herbs and vapors and um, all manner of incantations and things and but but I'm seeing regardless of the ritual that you went through what they allowed you to do was unleash yourself so it looks like they may have even given you some potions that kind of had the effect that, you know, alcohol today does in terms of it, it, it stopped you con putting a container on your emotions. It, um, it, you know, you, gosh, I can't think of the word. But anyway, you, you, you know, it, it, lo it looks like, you know, you just let it all out, screaming and sobbing and you didn't care at all. And that that was the best medicine for you. Because it let you expunge your grief. It let, helped you get through your grief. And I'm seeing you actually spent the rest of your life as um, taking vows and being a priestess in, in that um, temple. So, and then you got your connection with, you know, a higher, a higher energy, a higher power. And that's what sustained you through that life. So let me take a look at the current, the current relationship with this person. And so, you know, of what you were tuning into, it's like meeting this person again that you had such deep longing for. It's like you, even though you, you know, you became a priestess and you got through your grief, you never let go of the deep longing for this person and so it's in a way that longing that you have that frequency that connection is in part what draws you together lifetime after lifetime but it's also explains why you feel the way that you feel about this person because you are recognizing you know someone who has been really important for you now I'm going to just take a little step back and, and talk a little bit about um, soul groups and soulmates. Because there's um, a thing out there in the sort of new age community about these things called twin flames and soulmates and so on and so forth. And there's a very idealized perspective on what that is. So many people think, well, I am... I'm not whole and I have this longing within me and I just need to meet the right partner for me and then I will be complete. And so, you know, everyone's out there searching for their other half, for their partner. And actually, a soulmate, well, number one, there's not just one person for everyone. There's many possibilities. And number two, a soulmate, a relationship with your, your soulmate can be one of the most challenging relationships of all. Because what a soulmate actually is, and if you were tuning in earlier and you listened to my analogy about the disco ball, a soulmate is another body that has been created by the same soul 
that has created you. So talk about looking at yourself in the face every day. And I actually know of a couple who got married who were soul mates. And it is. It's like a maximum opportunity for soul expansion and soul growth. And so no stone gets unturned. It really is. They are challenging each other every second of every day. So this idealized version of what a soulmate is, in my, in my, from my perspective and my information, it's not true. Right? Because you're incarnating here to expand yourself, to learn things, to grow. And so a relationship with your soulmate can help you have the ultimate growth. But anyway, back to Lainey's question. This chap is not a soulmate, but he is a member of your soul group. And what we mean by soul group is that that is somebody who um, incarnates with you again and again and again. And there can be many members of our soul group. So we're nearing the end of the show. We've got seven minutes left. So <laughs> maybe time for a caller. So the number is 604-504-7441, extension 4142. You are tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And I am going to see if there is one more um, phone more call or email. So let's see if Corey's going to... Let us know if there is. So, here we go. Hi, Corey. Hello, Dr. Leslie. I don't have another caller in at the point, but I have a very short question here from Stephanie. And Stephanie wants to know, I want to know if I was royalty in my past life. Great. Thank you for that one, Corey. So, you know, that brings me to another another thing, you know, you know, I do past life readings, uh, you know, I think it's it's beneficial and useful, but sometimes people get caught up on, was I famous or was I important in a past life? You know, was I Albert Einstein or was I, you know, uh, and, you know, sometimes finding that out, the danger is that um, you can use it to build up your ego. And so, and I always say what's most important is your current lifetime. And I, when I'm doing past life readings, I always try to relate the past life to what's going on in the current life because that is the way that it can be the most use to you. Having said that, let's take a look at Stephanie. And my answer is yes. Uh, you you were royalty in a past life, maybe more than one, but the most recent one I'm seeing, you were actually one of Queen Victoria's daughters. <laughs> and I can see what this woman looked like. I'm not getting her name, but I'm sure if you did some research on the Internet, you would be able to see pictures of Queen Victoria's daughters and... Um, you know, she kind of, well, she looks a little bit like Queen Victoria, a bit slimmer, and she's got her hair in that style with the plaits and the in the loop kind of either side on either side of her head. And so, um, yeah, let me see if I can tell you anything about her and what she was went through in that lifetime. Well, one of the things that's coming up is in that position of being royalty, there were a lot of expectations of her in every aspect of her life, how she, what she had to do, you know, how she had to behave, um, how she had to be polite to people, how she had to go to certain events and so on and so forth. And I actually see her not enjoying doing that. I'm seeing her sort of sitting and studying a little note and she's learning what's on this note because it's information that she's supposed to know about certain people that she's going to meet at an event, you know, that day. And so she has to look like she knows things about them. So, but I'm seeing it was just like she would, she would rather not. 
She would rather not have to live up to these expectations. It was exhausting and it wasn't fun. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to another Unlocking Your Truth podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. For more information, go to her website at D-R-L-E-S-L-E-Y. P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S dot com. That's Dr. Leslie Phillips dot com, where you can ask questions or send her an email. And there's many free gifts on there for you as well. Come back again. Music.